In this video, I thought it would be interesting to discuss some of the geometric workflows that are available with the conveyor tools, uh, namely workflows that allow one to transfer uh, complex surface and solid geometry from Rhino into Revit. And as a demonstrator for this, I thought it would be interesting to mock up a, a bit of geometry here that's indicating a more complex uh, entryway um, that's made up of multiple panels with varying depths. Um, this was sketched up really quickly um, and there's so there's some messiness to this. Um, you can see surface conditions that are made up of multiple patches. So this stone face has sort of multiple slices um, in there. It's less than ideal. We also have different patch conditions and, and warbly edges. Um, it really is a kind of a mock-up here that is somewhat indicative of the uh, type of design uh, that someone may do when they're under a deadline crunch. They need to quickly study an area and get it to Revit for a presentation and may you know, kind of go under, undergo some level of refinement at a later date um, if, you know, it's, it's approved. Um, but, you know, in, in, in these kinds of situations, uh, you have to work with what you've got and you have to um, find ways of getting things into the desired environment, uh, ideally in as quick of a pace as uh, possible. And I think that's where conveyor can really come in here. Um, so, we have a series of layers over here. We have to first establish a conveyor layer structure. I'm going to run a conveyor setup command and it'll generate my conveyor layers and it'll also generate this window um, that I can use for quick and easy assignment of objects. Um, I'm going to turn off my entry layer here, which was that back surface and also the ground layer. I only need to work with the panels for the time being. And the first approach I'm going to take is to convert these panels individually into Revit. I want each of the panels to be selectable in the Revit project environment. Um, and one of the ways that I know that that can be done the quickest is to use uh, component categorization and direct shapes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select these panels. And you can see that right now they're unassigned to any category. I'm going to assign them to the component families uh, setting. And I'm also going to give them the generic model treatment here. So after that's been done, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to jump over into Revit. And I'm going to navigate to that file, which is this entryway start. And I'm going to hit open. And what we're going to see is a listing of each of those panels individually under this component family setting. Um, so there are, I believe, close to, to 58 panels here. And if I scroll down on the conveyor window, you'll see that there are these options for configure Rhino elements. And if I go under import settings, um, there's one setting in particular that I think is, is really important and it's under component family. Um, you can see that there is a kind of a default category there. Um, we've already assigned a, a category of object in Rhino. Um, but the, the setting that I'm concerned with the most is this setting here where it says direct shape. Um, you may have this set to family. Um, you can also have this set to direct shape. There are basically two types of imports that can occur here. If I had family selected, what that's going to do is it's going to create an individual family object for each of these panels. Um, that has some advantages in that you can go into the family and add parameters and other information to it. It can also be a slow process because you're creating families um, on the fly and, and that's not necessarily the most time efficient process there is, but it does have some value for sure um, in, in other contexts. Um, I'm mostly going to be working with direct shape. Uh, direct shape allows us to uh, on the fly create direct shape objects inside of the project environment it tends to be really fast. Um, it's kind of like creating an in-place family, although it doesn't have um, the ability to edit things afterwards or assign materials. So there are some limitations to it, but it does tend to be quite quick. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load those Rhino objects in. Let's see, I have 58 objects and it's going to go through this approach to uh, basically build up the geometry. And you can see what it's doing is it's bringing in each of those panels individually and building up that uh, entryway uh, facade condition. Um, and you can see that we've got an individual um, panel access here. Um, if I click on one of these panels, it's going to be giving me some information uh, related to kind of the Rhino object ID and, and other information that's coming in from uh, conveyor, um, you know, the Rhino path and things like that, that, that we can schedule from. Um, but yeah, quick, 
a quick import. Um, that was just a few seconds to bring all these panels in. Um, even the kind of uh, weirdest geometric conditions are coming through. Um, it's also managed to resolve some of the trimmed settings on some of these panels here. Um, and in this case, Revit did do a pretty good job of, if I jump back and look at this panel here, there are some split faces, um, but because there were some decent surface continuity. It's not showing those in this import, which is good. So this is this is one method uh, that one you can use you can to, to bring in geometry like this. Um, in some cases you may not want to have individual panel access. You may just want to have these grouped together uh, and be selectable as if it's one entire assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select these and delete them for the time being. And I'm going to jump back into my uh, Rhino environment. And the thing that I want to do here is I'm going to kind of take a couple steps back. I'm going to select my panels and I'm going to put them back on their panels layer so they're no longer going to be assigned to um, a conveyor category. And what I want to do here is I want to do this process of creating these as a block. So one technique that we like to use with conveyor is to use blocks as a way to capture groupings of, of objects together into a single assembly. So uh, when a family is created, for example, it has all the objects. Um, and we can also use the same direct shape workflow to create a multi-assembly um, direct shape using this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to select all my panels. I'm going to type in block. So I'm going to create a new block. I'm going to select this corner point here. I'm going to call this um, new panel assembly, like so, and hit OK. So now these are all kind of grouped together as a block definition. And now that I have my block definition, I'm then going to assign it to the components category. In this case, I'm going to bring it back to a generic model. Um, so in this case, it's the, the instances of blocks that get assigned to the category, um, even though the geometry inside of the block is in, you know, at a, inside of a different layer or assigned to a different layer. Um, so I'm going to save that, and I'm going to go back into Revit, and I'm going to refresh this model. And you'll see that all of those panels just got collapsed into a single uh, block uh, assembly there. Um, this is still set to direct shape, so I'm just going to go ahead and load this in. And this should come in really quick. Um, it's going to save that out, and then we have a single direct shape that has all of those panels captured. You can see if I hover over and select it, it's going to grab all of that geometry at once. So this may be, depending on how you're breaking down your project and you know to what level you're trying to access uh, individual information, this might be more ideal than having individual panels in your model. Um, geometry came in just fine um, as, as it... Uh, as it did before, um, and I grouped together. Um, I'm going to use the same block to go through the workflow of creating a family instead of a direct shape. So as I mentioned, direct shapes have these limitations where you can't really assign materials afterwards. Um, there's uh, You can add project-based parameters to this category and of course assign things that way, but sometimes it's just more convenient to have a true family. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that, and I'll refresh my uh, model here so that you know, verifies that the previous one isn't there and it's saying, okay, I need to import that. I'm going to go back down to my configure Rhino elements and my import settings. I'm going to set this back to family. So now this is going to be a family based import. Um, this will take a little bit longer, but we can kind of see what that looks like here. I'm going to load that in and it's going to go through this uh, process. It's going to say, hey, you're about to load a family here that has a block instance assigned to it. Do you want to load the block definition first? And you'd say yes. You can say we have this new panel assembly. This is the block. So it's going to create the block first. It's going to go through this process of firing up a, a family document in the background, and it's going to recreate that block as a family. Um, this does involve exporting some temporary files. Um, uh, in the background here, you can see some of the status bars indicating that that's happening. Again, it's a, it tends to be a slower process, but I think when we see that when it's done, uh, there are some upsides to this when we uh, are able to like look at the family and get into it here. Um, we have seen um, some really complex assemblies go through this process. So it tends to be a pretty stable and reliable process of, of doing this. Um, you can see that it's in the step now where it's importing the block into the project 
and we're going to get a notification that says, hey, you've imported one block successfully. I'm going to hit OK, and then it's going to place the block as an instance. So here you, we have an, a true family object. If I hover over it, it's generic models. It has a, a true family name and type associated with it. Um, if I double click into it, it's going to take me into the family itself where we then have individual access over these objects. And you can see that these are freeform elements. So these are not um, imports in the traditional sense. These are freeform elements that we can um, do some level of modification to. Um, we can assign materials to them and and uh, a number of, of other things if they're kind of more rectangular like this sometimes we get access to the uh, shape handles um, of the the object um, we can boolean and cut out of them so there's some level of m modification that can be had to these that uh, are not available with direct shapes even though they, the, the families tend to be slower you get some some upsides um, so that about covers it for this particular workflow. I wanted to demonstrate a couple of options for converting this complex geometry over into Revit. We went through the exercise of taking the individual panels and bringing them in as individual direct shapes using conveyor. We also converted the panels into a block assembly and we brought in the block uh, as a single direct shape that had all the panels. And then finally we brought in the panel assembly uh, as a as a family uh, that could be opened and edited to some degree afterwards and had a little bit more intelligence than the direct shape.